What's up guys, David here from Fun Buff, and I'm excited to finally be doing one of these Q&A videos again. It's been a while, maybe a little bit too long since I've done one, and there have been a lot of good questions that I've been getting lately, but before we get to answering any of them, I wanna give a big shout out to the sponsor for today's episode in Boost Mobile. So right now, Boost Mobile has some seriously good deals going on where if you switch to Boost by the end of the month, you get $50 off of a new smartphone, and on top of that, you get the option for unlimited talk, text, and data, all without having to sign a contract. So definitely check out that first link down in the description. Check out the deals that Boost Mobile has to offer and help support the channel in the process. All right, let's get to answering some questions. Do you think that in the next five years, there will be another OS that can compete with Android and iOS with the same level of success? So back when Windows Phone was first announced in 2010, I thought that maybe with a company as big as Microsoft backing it, that Windows Phone would have a good chance at becoming that OS that competes closely with Android and iOS. But obviously four years later, while Windows Phone is still growing and still improving, it's not growing at a fast enough rate to catch up to Android and iOS. So to answer your question, no, I don't think that there'll be another OS that'll come close to competing with the big two, at least when it comes to market share. If a company as big as Microsoft with its huge presence and probably even bigger marketing budget can't do it, then it's a tough sell for smaller companies like BlackBerry to be able to do so. So as of right now, the battle for any of the newer OSs is for third place behind Android and iOS, but still a far ways away from the number two spot. How old are you? At the time of recording this video, I am 24 years old, but I'll be turning 25 at the end of April, which isn't as exciting as turning 18 or 21, but I do have to say that I'm looking forward to seeing my car insurance rates go down. What are your thoughts on wearable technology like smartwatches or Google Glass? You know, when I got this question a few days back, I had an entirely different answer in mind, but today, Google just announced that Android will be officially extending into wearables in what they're calling Android Wear, which from the looks of it, it's gonna be an optimized version of Google Now right on your watch. Now, in my video on the Galaxy Gear a few months back, I said that if a smartwatch company could get a voice assistant like Siri or Google Now onto a smartwatch, then the value proposition of the smartwatch in general would be much, much greater than it is today. And with the announcement of Android Wear, Google may be the first company to bring this value to market. Now, I've had the opportunity to use Google Glass and a variety of smartwatches like Galaxy Gear, and while I've preferred the functionality of Google Glass with basically Google Now right on your face, I've always felt more comfortable and less awkward with a smartwatch since it's something that I'm already used to wearing and a watch is also something that everybody else is already used to seeing. I think by bringing Android and Google Now to the smartwatch and working with manufacturers, chip makers, and fashion companies to actually make these smartwatches look like normal watches, Android Wear will be seriously successful and it might just be the thing that starts the wearable revolution. But of course, it is a little bit too early to say and it will be a few months before Android Wear comes to market, but from what Google is showing off and what the manufacturers Google is working with is showing off, it looks really, really promising. And I have to say that this is the most excited I've been about wearable tech since, well, basically ever. What is your take on the Galaxy S5? So on the day that the Galaxy S5 was first announced, I went to Twitter and said that I thought it was an evolutionary update over the Galaxy S4, and I still feel the same way today. I don't see anything that is particularly revolutionary about the Galaxy S5, and honestly, I think that might be a good thing because instead of trying to make the phone seem revolutionary like Samsung did with all those gimmicky air gestures on the S4, Samsung instead focused mostly on the things that actually matter. The new 16 megapixel camera looks like it'll be a solid improvement over the camera on the Galaxy S4, which was already good to begin with. The fingerprint reader should make the process of unlocking and securing your phone much more convenient. The IP67 water and dust resistance will probably end up saving thousands upon thousands of Galaxy phones out there, and the new ultra power saving mode should help significantly improve battery life. So while it is an evolutionary update, it looks to be an overall solid update, and honestly, at this stage in the smartphone game, that's all you could really ask for since there are only so many things you can change to make the phone feel revolutionary before some of those changes end up taking away from the experience instead of adding to it. So 
I think Samsung did a overall pretty good job. If you had to choose one phone to use for the rest of your life, which phone would it be? Okay, so that that's an interesting question. If I had to choose just one phone to use for the rest of my life, I'd probably have to go with the Galaxy Note 3. I mean, it's the phone that I use right now as my daily driver and I'm actually pretty happy with it, but more importantly, it's also probably the most future-proof phone out there with 4K video recording, USB 3.0, a boatload of RAM, and expandable storage in addition to all the other high-end specs that you'd expect from a smartphone in 2014. All right, if you guys have any questions for me that you'd like to see answered in a future episode, ask them down in the comments below or hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus and who knows, they may just get featured in the next Q&A. But otherwise, that's it for me in this video. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button to show your love and if you haven't already, I'd hit that subscribe button because there are some awesome tech videos coming up soon that you do not want to miss. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the very next video.